Hey guys, it's Anna aka The Hazina Girl and the first thing I want to say before I start this video is welcome to all the new people who joined the Hazina fan. Hey. You guys know it's always a party, right? If you guys didn't know, my goal for this year was to reach a thousand subscribers. So if you guys haven't joined the Hazina fam, please be sure to click the subscribe button. I'm going to be making so many new videos, but I want to say that I'm just so happy to have seen that you guys have been subscribing and you guys have been watching my videos, liking, commenting, asking me questions, sending me emails. I appreciate all of it. Please continue to do that. I love it when you guys interact with me and I like to feel like we're having a conversation, you know? I feel like you and I, we just, we get along like that, you know what I mean? So yeah, with that being said, uh, let's get right on to the video. So like I mentioned today, I'm going to be talking about how to apply to Binka and the reason is because Yeah, you guessed it. I'm applying to Binka literally today Like I put together my application and everything and I'm going to head there literally as soon as we finish filming this video if You guys didn't know I've been wanting to go to Binka for like three years now I'll, I'll leave a Binka playlist full of all the videos I've made so far about Binka so you guys can see that I'm not kidding This is knowledge that I've like picked up over the past basically three years of me doing research and coming up to like today Which is me actually applying. It's kind of a big deal. So yeah I hope you guys are just as excited as I am to start this amazing Binka journey So if you guys want to find out more about how to play the bunga, just keep watching. Okay, so the first step is learn Japanese. Ta da! You guys knew I was gonna say that, right? Yeah. You have to learn Japanese. Bunga Fashion College is a Japanese fashion school and there are no courses in English. A lot of people message me being like, Sena, um, I don't speak Japanese, can I go? And I'm like, no. <laughs> It's not like it's not to be mean or anything like that, but it's because like all the classes are in Japanese. You, you won't be able to take the courses unless you actually understand, speak, read, and know Japanese. So if you guys have studied Japanese in your own home countries, that's totally fine as well. One thing I suggest to you is to take the JLPT or the EJU. If you've taken the test and you haven't been able to pass it, or if you haven't even started learning Japanese at all, my number one advice to you is to come to Japan and learn Japanese in Japan. It's completely different than learning at school in your home country because you're just gonna learn so much more while living here. And I think the minimum requirement for Binka is six months. So you can come for just six months if you want to. I mean, I suggest that you stay for a bit longer. I have friends who went for six months and said that they didn't quite think it was enough. So yeah, step number one, learn Japanese. All right, so now you've learned Japanese. You're perfect at Japanese. Well, you're not perfect, but you're close. And you're like, well, Sena, what's step number two? Step number two is to go to Bunka. You need to go to Binka. And this is why if you already came to Japan and you're already living in Japan and learning Japanese, step number two will be easy for you because you don't have to go very far. You just have to go down to Shinjuku and, you know, check out the school itself. I also want to give you guys some short clips of like me when I went to go uh, to Bunka side. Here's a short clip of me at Bunka side with my friends. <laughs> Welcome to the Hazina Girl channel, guys. Say hi. Welcome to the video. Hey. She's gonna be a future YouTuber. Guys, I'll put her channel linked in below, okay? Don't worry about it. <laughs> not you, no. Not, we're not gonna subscribe to your channel. So. <laughs> I say to go check out Punka. Reason number one is so that you can see what kind of school it's like and see if it's actually a school for you. November 3rd, which is Bunka Day, I went to Bunka for the first time ever in my entire life. I went to go check it out. They had a huge festival going on. And it was amazing. I got to see the school in person. Uh, and that was a good chance for me to be like, yeah, I want to go here. Reason number two why you should go to Bunka is because you can go there and pick up the application in person. I'll leave a link in the description where you can find out more information about how to receive the application forms. So when you go to Bunka in real life in person, you're going to get one of these. So this here is a Bunka fashion college application package and inside is going to be everything you need to apply. So let's say now you've done step one and step two. You've gone to Japanese language school, you've learned Japanese, you've taken the JLPT, 
and then you've also gone to Binka, you've checked out the school, you love it, you've gotten the application package, how do you apply? Now, this is what we're gonna delve into in detail because there's a lot of things that I learned, and one thing I want you guys to note though is I'm making this video in 2017 for the 2018 school year. Now, if you guys are watching this video in the future, things might have changed, but for the most part, I think this is kind of a basic outline of what you need to be able to give in your application at Bootcamp. So once you open up the application package, you're gonna get something that looks like this. So once you get this, um, you should open it up, obviously, and inside you're gonna see that there is also another uh, document that looks like this, and this one is called Documents for Application. This is the real document you're gonna need to sign to apply to Buga. Now the cool thing about this that I love is that in the first page they actually give you an example sheet. You have to write your middle school, your high school, how many years you've studied, um, whether you've graduated or not. You have to fill in, you know, information about work if you also went to work uh, in between some school years and then you have to write here a little description as to why you want to study at Bunka and uh, another explanation talking a little bit about what you want to do after you've graduated. One thing too that's really special about like Japanese college applications is you need to get a picture of yourself. It needs to be uh, a specific dimension. There's another side as well. This is the second part of the document. You have to write all your family members. You have to sign here. You have to put your uh, hanko stamp, which I mean if you live in Japan you probably have like a hanko stamp. But uh, yeah, so that's what you need to do. You need to write what your parents do for a living or what you know your financial sponsor does for a living. Uh, and then you have to write um, when you're going to like, you know, what your Japanese proficiency level is. See, so if you did number one and you already passed the JLPT or the EJU or you've studied Japanese in Japan, then you should be good on this. You can go ahead and write that down. So yeah, so then this is what the blank application form looks like. You just fill it out yourself. And once you've done that, you can move on to the second part of the application process, which is getting an emergency contact. There are actually very specific requirements for the emergency contact person. I did not know this until recently. But this is what the form looks like. Essentially, you have to put in their information, you put in your information, and they need to be the ones to fill this out. You can't say that your emergency contact is your mom who lives in your home country. It needs to be somebody who lives in Japan, and it needs to be somebody with a full-time job. It cannot be a student. So you can't ask your other friend who lives you know, across the street from you who also goes to Japanese language school. So pick a friend that you trust. Pick a friend that's a good person uh, and somebody who you know you know that you'll be friends with for a long time too because I mean you know if it's somebody that's kind of flaky and just a random person then there's no point you know. So once you've gotten that done the next thing you need to do is the financial support statement. So the financial support statement looks like this and once again you have to put in their information you have to write what your relationship or what that person's relationship is to you uh, and even if you're paying by yourself by the way you need to get this signed by someone else who would be your financial support you can't say that it's you unfortunately and this needs to be filled out by the actual person who is your financial supporter essentially so you need to make sure that yeah you get this filled by them now in my case it was you know my parents what i did is i scanned this i sent a copy to my mom my mom signed it and then she scanned it and sent it back to me it, it even says like if the person named above is admitted to your school as a regular student, I hereby pledge that I will be financial, a financial supporter during his or her studies. I will submit an income certificate or a bank balance certificate to clarify that in fact the tuition fee and living expense, expenses can be paid. And that's written in English, okay? That's how important this is. <laughs> so yeah, great, wow, whew. So finished, you finished that part. The last part is a lot easier. You just gotta fill out these little address labels. So you're gonna write your address four times and they're gonna use this to send you mail. And that's it. You've officially completed all of the four steps, all of the four things that need to be filled out in this document. The other thing that you're going to need as well is you're going to need some documents to prove that you've graduated from your most recent school. Now, normally you get a certificate, right? You get a diploma, right? And when I went to apply the first time, I gave them my diploma, but they said that is not what they want. They do not want your diploma. They want something in Japanese called a shoumeisho. So a shosho in Japanese is what they call a diploma. It's what they give you, you know, when you're graduating, congratulations. They don't want that. They want a shoumeisho. So in my case, I actually had to get my guidance counselor to write me a letter saying, this is to state that, you know, Senna has graduated from blah, blah, blah school in the year blah, blah, blah. And it needs to be stamped with an official seal from the school and signed by the person who wrote that letter. In my case, it was my guidance counselor. It doesn't even have to be your principal, I don't think, as long as it's somebody who works at the school and who can get that uh, officially stamped. So that's what you need for your high school diploma. It's not your actual 
diploma paper, but it's more like a graduation certificate written by somebody. Um, that's the first mistake I made when I went to apply and they told me to go back home and fix that. <laughs> the second thing you're going to need from your school is your transcript, basically. And in my case, I went to a French school in Canada, so I had to get that translated to English. I didn't know. Mine was like half in English, half in French, because, you know, Canada, we're just weird bilingual like that. But they needed everything to be in English, not like some parts in French, some parts in English, everything in English. So. I had to get my transcript translated in Canada. I got my parents to get it translated for me. And then after they get it translated, this is really important. Not only do you need to get it tran like translated, but you need to get that paper to the school and then the school needs to stamp it for you saying that you know they approve of that translation. So that's what I did. I was blessed enough to have it uh, shipped to me by my mother and it came in just in time. Today's literally the last day for the application and I got it like last night in the mail. That's how crazy it was. You're gonna need that document and you're gonna need the real thing. So after your parents get it translated and they get it stamped by your school, you can't get like a scanned version and then you print that out and give it to the school. They need the real thing, the original copy. So you need your school to mail that to you or get your parents to go to the school, pick up that document and have them ship it to you. Make sure you're doing this weeks in advance because you don't know how long it's gonna take for those documents to get shipped to you, okay? The next thing you're gonna need is your Japanese language school's forms. So, your Japanese language school are gonna need to give you your grades up until now and your uh, attendance rate. Now, in Japan, attendance rate is a big deal, okay? You need to get over 80 to be able to uh, get into the school. Now, that's doable, obviously. If you show up to school on a, on a daily basis, you'll get over 80, you'll be fine. So, um, make sure that you're you know, actually studying when you go to Japanese school. Make sure you're not sleeping in class um, because they will look at those two things. Next thing is you're gonna need your passport. You don't need to make a photocopy. I thought I needed a photocopy, but you don't. You just need the real thing. I'll just look through it really quickly. Make sure that you're actually from the country that you say you're from. And then the next thing you're gonna need is your Zaidu card, which is essentially your like foreign identification card that they give you in Japan. If you're living in Japan as a student and you have a student visa, you should already have that card. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, unfortunately, if you're only coming to Japanese school for three months, this is something that a lot of people don't know, you won't get that card. You need to be living in Japan with a student visa for you to get that foreign ID card. So once again, you don't need a photocopy, you need the real thing. Go there with the real card itself and bring that to them. And then the third and final thing is you're gonna need your card for your health insurance. This is to prove to them, of course, that you have health insurance and that you've actually registered under the ward where you live in Japan. So yeah, make sure you show them that health card and um, yeah, make sure, like I said, not a photocopy, but the real thing that you hand it to them so they can look at it and make sure that you um, are living in Japan. There's of course some separate documents you need to fill if you want to live on the school at the school dorm. I personally suggest that if you've never lived in Japan before and that you're maybe applying from overseas, um, then maybe yes, the dorms will be a good option for you. I'm personally not applying, so I don't know all the details for that, but I'll try to leave as much information as I can for you guys to read and kind of inform yourselves. They also give you this really cool, um, you know, pamphlet as well that comes in the application package and it's supposed to explain to you you know what the different dorms are like what they look like how much they cost no matter where you are in the world you can actually apply for one of these now this is a book that can help you choose what course you want to take and I want to make a whole separate video on how to choose what course you want to take but this is a cool book that you guys should definitely pick up if you can just go on the website and you can apply for it now this is the one for 2018 as you guys can see. You guys can get one for the most recent year. They allow you to apply from wherever you are in the world uh, and yeah, they'll ship this out to you so you can read it. And this is a great book because it has all of the different courses. It explains to you what the differences are. It's in Japanese. Unfortunately, there is not an English version, but you know, it'll be a little Japanese study for you. And I mean, worst case scenario, you can look at the pictures and at least see what like the graduates are making and working on and, and see if like that's you know the kind of thing you want to do. Uh, oh my goodness, I'm totally forgetting. The last thing you need, this is the final step, is money. You're gonna need to pay 33,000 Japanese yen with your application in cash. They don't accept debit cards, they don't accept credit cards. You need to come with that money in cash and hand it to them with your application. And once you go there to apply, they will sit you down and walk you through each of these things that I just mentioned. They make sure that everything is you know, adding up um, before they even like you know accept your application and give you the dates for like the interview process and all of that so yeah i hope that this video was informative for you guys last time i made an informative video like this i left my email and i told you guys you can ask me questions but i realized that i think it's best that you guys directly contact the schools because i don't have all the answers i can only answer from my own personal experience but yeah if you guys want to reach me then you can of course leave comments and i'll try my best to answer them as soon as possible and uh yeah i guess that's it for this video i hope you guys found it helpful uh make sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos about bunka and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!
Hey guys, it's Anna aka The Zena Girl, and today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about ooh, something that I like to call fun times, baby. <laughs> it is a party though, actually. You guys are like, uh, Senna, what the heck is going on here? Like, I'm so confused. Where, where are you? What, what's going on? What, I don't, you know, bro, who you? We're gonna go to Bunga. Where? Why do I keep talking and we? It's just me, homie. It's just you, girl. To find out more about Bunka and to kind of go on this Bunka journey. I don't know what that was, but it was something. Okay, you don't know how to focus and make a video, honey.